Well, impetus of the original prototype of the modern central bank, which was the Bank of England, founded by Mayor Amsel, Amsel Rothschild, uh, and proliferated uh, about the world afterward. But uh, Rothschild hired the Hessian mercenaries that uh, Washington's uh, famous crossing of the Delaware defeated in the American Revolution. And obviously, the purpose was to establish banking here. So, there are several things that go hand in hand that we we have to we have to um, we have to take into account to have a truthful perspective of these things. Um, you know, uh, the question is: Is it more important to it, to ensure that our country, which is a republic, uh, adhere to uh, the principles of representation or do we have something more important to do uh, which justifies allowing right under our own, own noses um, something that for instance was reported in uh, Congressman Louis T. McFadden's uh, June 15th 1932 congressional address where he details as a former chairman of the House Banking Committee, where he details, <clears throat> two years into the Great Depression, events that are culminating in something that he can't possibly know at the time, which is going to occur seven years down the road. But uh, he's detailing how $60 billion of gold annually are being removed from the United States Treasury not only to fund the military preparations of Germany, but to pay the debts of the Japanese military preparations to the German munition maker Dynamite Nobel, the famous Nobel laureate fame. Oh yes. You know. So the 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 the, the, the beaches at Normandy were covered with blood because we did not keep our house in order. We made an enemy which may never have grown to proportions which dared challenge us otherwise, but for our own iniquities. Uh, so this starts at the beginning of the revolution and it goes through time and we, we lose presidents and we have attempted assassinations. And here with this, uh, William is... Uh, well explained, uh, you know, uh, the Schiff family who's financing wars and, you know, war profiting was going on over a hundred years ago, as it is now, as it's returning now like never before. And uh, uh, this banking system is, 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 is deeply entwined in all of it and is a principal instrument of uh, the perpetrators of these crimes against humanity. They are crimes against humanity. Uh, so, uh, leading up to the, uh, you know, the uh, unwarranted creation of the Federal Reserve, the um, the, the typical, uh, you know, uh, so-called business cycle, which is a totally unnatural thing, is actually perpetrated by uh, the banking community, and that is it would they would loan <clears throat> this circulation, this obfuscation of the currency into circulation to finance uh, a tremendous uh, industrial revolution. And, uh, you know, the industry and its markets would become dependent on the circulation. Uh, they would, uh, you know, could only maintain it by further borrowing. And then somewhere down the road, uh, short of the maximum possible lifespan of the system, the, uh, the bankers would, uh, would say, uh, you've exceeded your credit worthiness. We're not going to loan you any more money. And, uh, so, uh, uh, that, area of the economy collapses um, and uh, you know the bankers take it over proprietorship uh, falls directly to the bankers in default and uh, you know uh, so uh, there is tremendous public sentiment rising against this um, and this is the thing that we need to observe about this is is that uh, you know public 
objection to injustice uh, is nothing without knowing what the justice would be. And this is why mathematic, this idea of mathematically perfected economy is so important. No one in Congress can argue that anything else serves you at all. No one in Congress can can argue, can argue that uh, um, uh, interest doesn't inherently multiply artificial indebtedness into terminal failure if you understand the arguments which prove that it only can. And no one in Congress <clears throat> can tell us that there is any justice in this economy in, 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 in terms of inflation or deflation, circulatory that is, or, or price inflation or deflation. You see, there, there is one justice and there is one fact of economy. And once you realize that, then we have the tool from which uh, public indignation can be elevated to public resolution of the problem. Because no one in, in government, no, no member of the legislative branch of government or the judicial or the executive branch of government can stand in the way of a people who understand this monumental crime against us. Uh, people who 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 begin to open their eyes about this one of the first things that strikes them is it, it is the crime is so monumental they don't want to believe it can exist but it's there in all the things around you <clears throat> and one of the most important things for us to understand about it is that in order to persist in this crime we have to be denied representation and we see the evidence of this uh uh, everywhere, everywhere uh, in the campaign con uh, contributions of not only the candidate that wins, but the candidate that comes in second. Their greatest contributors are the financial system. And why would that be? You find out why that would be when you go and you contact that congressman, that senator, that president, that presidential candidate with a proof of mathematically perfected economy. And they don't even have their secretary return your call. And she was totally convinced you were right. You, you're, you're met only by evasion because they can only lose if they engage you. And I have many, many experiences of, of you know, appearing at, the, you know, Jerry Brown campaign and headquarters in San Francisco and, you know, actually being asked to speak, you know, and after the meeting was closed, you know, by mistake, uh, you know, and, and keeping all the, 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 the delegates from all over the country uh, uh, there until way late at night because uh, an our audience that was falling asleep woke up because it was that important. And when the matter reached the, uh, the presidential candidate, um, it fell on deaf ears. Now, that's a very curious thing. Because there isn't a candidate yet who's even attempted to offer an invalidation of the proposition of mathematically perfected economy. And as we have understood from this program already, uh, there is, it, the, the math is elementary and irrefutable. It, no reasonable person would even question it. So they know they're wrong. So uh, once you understand this, you view history in a completely different way and you see, you know, how to fill in all the voids that uh, have purposely been taken out of it. I mean, a reputable history book would teach children, you know, what, what, how, how Schiff was in, instrumental in, in getting uh, Wilson elected, how Wilson betrayed the people, how Wilson was, was apprised of the fact of, that he betrayed the people, why William Jennings Bryan resigned from the Wilson administration. These would be the facts we would be aware of. But because the crime is being covered up, uh, all those who participated in the crime knowingly, all the fact that they did so knowingly is concealed from us in history. History is rewritten immediately. It, it vanishes from, uh, you know, our eyes, our ears, our touch. We can't find it any, anymore unless, uh, you know, uh, we seek out those who, who have preserved it for us. But so what, what led up to the 
great, you know, the establishment of the Federal Reserve System is a preposterous notion that uh, consolidating the 12 biggest private banks uh, in a corporation uh, which would be given a false name to deceive the people, Federal Reserve. It's neither federal nor a reserve of anything. Uh, that this entity would somehow save the people from the consequences of its obfuscated currency, although it was only to persist in this obfuscated currency. From that alone, we know uh, that the Federal Reserve System uh, could only precipitate in the consequences, uh, which uh, the lies and deceptions which, uh, uh, by which it was established were meant to, d to deceive us otherwise. Somehow, just consolidating these 12 banks without changing a principle in this obfuscation of the currency, which it only can heap injustice upon us until that just injustice escalates to uh, terminal sums of insoluble debt and uh, uh, the national and world economies collapse. So, uh, anyway, all of the arguments to establish the Federal Reserve are, are, are preposterous falsehoods in this um, this uh, speech by uh, Congressman Louis T. McFadden on June 15th, um, 1932, uh, details, many of them. And, I mean, uh, Wilson could be told the exact opposite of of an obvious fact and uh, he just believed it. He was uh, unbelievably uh, gullible, uh, you know, victim of, of this deception. And uh, he, he must have been selected for that very reason. Um, in any case, uh, the bank, very banks which are consolidated in the Federal Reserve System were the, the, the principal perpetrators of all the financial terminal, turmoil leading up to the events, which the bankers proposed would be solved by consolidating their power. So they had um, this bill, which has been called the Aldrich Bill, proposed by the, the Republican Party, which, of course, then was proposing to establish a central bank the 1912 Democrat Party platform uh, promised uh, not to create a central bank, and the Democrats were elected to power. Immediately, the authors of the uh, Aldrich Bill uh, have their, uh, you know, uh, principal representatives uh, uh, of, of their efforts, uh, one Colonel House principally, uh, 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 you know, uh, working immediately to uh, establish a, a central bank and and so inept is Wilson that he doesn't even realize even that the Democrat party platform promised not to create a central bank he has to be reminded of it and uh, even so uh, he overrides that and goes with the uh, the bankers so uh, within a a year of, of being elected, uh, you know, uh, through rewriting of the Aldrich Bill into the Federal Reserve Act, uh, you know, which was drawn up by these bankers. Uh, it wasn't uh, uh, what person in history has ever insisted that they've uh, they be subjected to terminal exploitation. You know, it doesn't happen. What intelligent person, at least no intelligent person, would ever do this? Um, and there was no public mandate, but yet, uh, you know, so the, the Federal Reserve Act was passed into existence on the eve of December 23rd, 1913, against a Democratic uh, Party platform, which promised not to create a central bank. And, of course, it was never subjected to public affirmation, which is one reason this mandate for mathematically perfected economy and absolute consensual representation uh, is a mandate for the latter as well. Uh, no law can exist without uh, um, subjection to public affirmation, according to this mandate, So um, that we're in, intending to pass here. So... Uh, what happens is uh 
you know, 15 years.